Hi guys, I'm Merle at Micro Homesteaders. I wanted to talk today about something that's getting a little attention, but maybe not as much as it should. And what that is, is a solar minimum. And if you don't know what that is, it's a cycle that the sun goes through. And there are different cycles. Uh, amounting to different temperatures, length of duration, and stuff like that. Now, I'm not telling you to dig out your Arctic clothing or uh, anything like that, but a wood-burning stove and a few extra beans actually might be in order. Let's go uh, to a website that I have found here. And this is uh, the Astronomical Society of the Pacific. And there are several like this one. And they talk about a year without a summer and this is a historical fact it did actually happen and they say a weak solar maximum a major volcanic eruption and possibly even the wobbling of the Sun conspired to make the summer of 1816 one of the most miserable ever recorded the year 1816 is known to scientists and historians as 1800 and froze to death or the year without a summer it was the locust of a period of natural ecological destruction not soon to be forgotten during that year the northern hemisphere was slammed with the effects of at least two abnormal but natural phenomena these events were mysterious at the time, and even today they're not well understood. First, 1816 marked the midpoint of one of the sun's extended periods of low magnetic activity called the Dalton Minimum. This particular minimum lasted from about 1795 to 1820s, and it resembled the earlier Maunder Minimum from about 1645 to 1715 that was responsible for at least 70 years of abnormally cold weather in the northern hemisphere. The Maunder minimum interval is sandwiched with an even better known cool period known as the Little Ice Age which lasted from about the 14th through the 19th centuries. And what I'm trying to do is get the word out to a lot of people that know nothing of this history or uh, what is possible. And I guess what it boils down to is, you know, being like the Boy Scouts and being prepared. In most of our live streams, uh, we talk most usually, a little bit at least, about being prepared for whatever might happen. And here's another website that's actually the uh, NASA website. And they talk uh, here and they say the solar minimum is coming. So it's not just something that somebody thought up uh, to put on YouTube and, you know, call it fear porn or what have you. This is something that can actually happen and uh, it, if we don't prepare for it, you know, we're going to have problems. But they say uh, high up in the clear blue noontime sky, the sun appears to be much the same day in and day out, year after year. But astronomers have long known that this is not true. The sun does change, and properly filtered telescopes reveal a fiery disk often speckled with dark sunspots. Sunspots are strongly magnetized and they f crackle with solar flares. Magnetic explosions that illuminate the earth with flashes of x-rays and extreme ultraviolet radiation. The sun is a seething mass of activity until it's not. Every 11 years or so, sunspots fade away, bringing a period of relative calm. This is called the solar minimum, 
says Dean Pasnell of NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, and it's a regular part of the sunspot cycle. So guys, you know, if you uh, are like me and you burn wood anyway, if you uh, have been used to burning maybe 12 ricks or uh, I don't know how many cords that is, but in our part of the country we we measure it uh, 4 feet high, 16 across, and 8 feet long, and that's what we call a rick. We generally do burn about 12. So this year, it's uh, my hope that I'll have somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 should we have an extended period of cold weather. And if you want to get on the internet and uh, look up solar minimum, you'll find many of these sites. So it's just a heads up. It's a just in case kind of thing. Uh, those that are making predictions about this thing, though, are saying that it is going to happen in the winter of 2019 and 2020. So, better to be prepared than not. I hope you all have a great day, and we'll see you the next time on Micro Homesteaders. Bye-bye.